hardest question I'm going to ask you. Tell everybody your name so that we all know who we're talking to. Joseph Geronimo. And just spell it for the record, too. J-O-S-E-P-H, Geronimo, G-E-R-O-N-I-M-O. And Mr. Geronimo, you are related to Geronimo. That's my great-grandfather. Talk to us about the stories that you've heard about your great-grandfather, the people who you've, who you've grown up around, and the things that you've heard. Well, uh, I uh, was fortunate to uh, talk with a lot of the people that uh, fought alongside him, the old warriors, both men and women, and uh, uh, I, I didn't know that they were uh, famous people until I seen books of them as I got older, and I said, I know this person, I know this person, and uh, they told me lots of stories that, uh, uh, about the conflict that took place and about how uh, our uh, old people and women and children were slaughtered by the cavalry, uh, both from Mexico and the United States, and uh, uh, the only thing that uh, my grandfather did was to protect his family and protect the land. Uh, this was paradise, and God gave us this land, and uh, my people just wanted to live here in peace, and people came to start destroying everything. And uh, when my grandfather uh, was a young man, they had uh, plenty of buffaloes and stuff like that. They ate, they ate those buffaloes, went and harvested them, and uh, uh, they told us about all, all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, they, they said my grandfather uh, was a spiritual man. Uh, the whole uh, uh, Apache, uh, Apaches are spiritual people. They believe in God, and uh, uh, when we had hardships, uh, we we prayed to God, and uh, God gave us uh, different things to help ourselves with. And uh, uh, even uh, during the uh, conflicts with the U.S. Army, my grandfather they they told about my grandfather how uh, he was being attacked as they were going through uh, the White Sands area. And uh, some cavalry, uh, I think they were called the Buffalo Soldiers. Uh, and I guess two groups of them were chasing them. And uh, they ran the horses through the white sands and then uh, they took uh, the horseshoes off because the, uh, the horseshoes just helped uh, get deeper into the sand. So they took the horseshoes off and got away. Hmm. And uh, they got on the other side of white sands and they kept. They ran the horses down. They were all tired, so they jumped off the horses and kept running. And they were way out in the desert. Uh, the cavalry was bearing down on them full speed. And the story goes that uh, my grandfather told them all to sit down together. And they got in a tight circle, and he started singing. And as the cavalry was coming, they turned into a pack of dogs, and then they passed them, and they kept going. They kept you know, turned back into the cavalry again, so they never saw them. They were in, out in the middle of uh, the desert, wide open, but uh, stories like that, that's how they keep getting away. And those were the stories that you heard from the time you were a small boy, I guess. Yes, I, I've heard them all my life uh, since the time uh, I was born. Uh, we tell uh, stories like this. We hand, these stories are handed down to us even as infants. Uh, we don't uh, do baby talks to our children. Uh, we talk to them just like an, another adult so that they will learn the correct way. And uh, that's how I was taught. Um, uh, everything in our life is sacred, uh, even the uh, little cradles that we have uh, to keep the babies in. Uh, they represent everything in the universe, and it protects our children. And those uh, we consider it sacred. Everything in our life is sacred. Uh, we talk to the uh, the plants and the animals, even rocks. Uh, mm -hmm. They give us the strength to overcome everything that we we face in life. And uh, one of the things that we're taught uh, was to know our total environment, mm -hmm. know everything in our life, uh, know uh, all the plants and animals, plus people that come into our country, learn everything that you can about them. And, that's one of the things that uh, we try to pass on down. And uh, to be a true Apache, a person needs to know the whole environment, uh, know 
which plants are foods and medicine and where the waters are and where the different mountain ranges are. Uh, it's just uh, for self-preservation. So these are uh, certainly things that your great-grandfather would have heard and would have been important to him. So these, this was really an invasion on his land and his paradise yeah. and his people. So uh, he was viewed as a, as a defender. That, that's what we viewed him as. And, you know, uh, uh, I was told stories from other, other uh, tribal members, uh, some, some of the elder ladies that seen him. They said that uh, he was uh, a sacred medicine man and they would never dare look in his face when they see him coming. They look down or turn away uh, because out of respect. And he respected uh, uh, everybody. He took uh, some of the orphans that were, uh, whose parents were killed by uh, the foreigners in our country, and uh, he took them and raised them and, uh, as his own. And, uh, even some of the old leaders, uh, when they were uh, the leaders before him, the well-known leaders, uh, they called him and gave him a responsibility to watch over their children. And uh, the, the old leaders, uh, well, they fought alongside my grandfather uh, for years uh, because he was given that responsibility. He gave his word to protect them, and uh, he fought alongside them. Uh, one of those was Naichi. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that that family, uh, that's where my kids come from. They're from the Naichi family and Cochise family. And, uh, my grandfather was responsible for looking after Naichi after his father Cochise passed away. These don't sound like the actions of a terrorist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, if you invade someone's land and then they come after you, uh, what do you call them? Well, you call them a terrorist? Uh, you're the invader? Uh, you know, that's one of the things that really upset me. Uh, the, uh, what I heard on uh, TV the last few days since they killed Osama bin Laden, they compared him to my grandfather. Uh, I was upset because uh, uh, that's a slap in the face of my family. Uh, there is no way that uh, you can compare Osama bin Laden to my grandfather Geronimo. Uh, a better comparison would be between uh, Osama bin Laden and Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States. Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States, he was responsible for the death of thousands of innocent women and children. He killed all those Indians and chased them out of the, the East Coast. And he's America's Hitler. Uh, so if they want to compare uh, Osama bin Laden to anyone, they should compare him to uh, Andrew Jackson. There was a time, though, when some of his own people were made to feel differently about him, though. They, they were scared uh, after they were put on the reservation. Uh, the U.S. agents and armies and everybody that came around there wanted to put the blame on my grandfather for being put on the reservation. So they said that uh, if, if Geronimo didn't fight us, uh, you would still have your lands. And, uh, no, that's a lie. Uh, it happened to all the tribes across the United States. Uh, everyone was put on reservations. Those lands were taken. But uh, these histori so-called historians, they uh, twist things around and make him look like a terrorist and make him sound like something that he's not. Uh, it's because these people have control of the news media. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, some of them hide behind the name of professors and uh, <coughs> Uh, that's that's terrible. Uh, we have no say about what, what they teach in the textbooks that say that my grandfather surrendered. That was a big lie. Uh, it was a truce. And the, the funny thing about that truce that took place was uh, there was two interpreters. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was, uh, whatever he said, was interpreted by a Spanish guy that knew a little English to another uh, white man that spoke a little Spanish, right. and then he translated to Crook and the other generals. Mm -hmm. So it's two, two times, you know, and lost you, in you, can tell, <laughs> you can tell what happens. Get a, a lot, lot gets lost. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they they became outright lies, and they blamed my grandfather for a lot of these things, and uh, uh, that's one of uh, I guess uh, mainstream America's ways of keeping our people down and keeping them down as uh, third class citizens. They don't want uh, um, anyone to be uh, thought of as a hero, anyone that stood in their ways, and of course. Geronimo, my grandfather, stood in the way of everybody, and he was uh, among the last ones uh, to be fighting the U.S. Army. They had thousands after him, and they still couldn't catch him. And it was my own people uh, that talked him out of it. Uh, the people that talked him out of fighting, uh, one of them was named Martin. Those are my relatives. Really. And uh, he didn't surrender to them. He, they spoke with him. I have a great uncle right now. His name is Ringling Martin. He's the grandson of uh, Martin. And that family, they're, they're all related to me. Could you see how, if you, look, if you put yourself in the 1870s and put yourself in the mindset of the average white person, um, the average Mexican, the average Spaniard, could you see how it would be possible for them to look at Geronimo as a killer, as a terrorist at that time? Well, everything gets uh, taken out of context, and uh, they said uh, there, was a, there were hundreds, maybe even thousands of deaths that my grandfather was responsible for. Uh, the the uh, so-called professor from UNM, that idiot, uh, he needs to take a look at the actual figures. And uh, it was nowhere in the thousands, nowhere in the hundreds. It was very minimum. Uh, all of this uh, outcry was just uh, the more that uh, the public uh, outcries about my grandfather Geronimo, uh, the more um, the army pays attention and the politicians and bring the army in to uh, get them out of the way. Uh, because this was paradise and everybody wanted it. And, mm -hmm. Now they got it, and what are they doing? They're destroying it. He was considered a threat at that time. It was a threat to what yeah. they wanted. Yeah, it was completely a threat to, he was just in their way of um, destroying the land. And uh, now uh, the whole world's concerned about global warming and who's responsible for that. It's certainly not my tribe. It's one of the biggest in, uh, industrial giants in the whole world. It's the United States that's responsible for the global warming. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's, the, that's one of the reasons uh, maybe God's punishing them for destroying paradise. And this is paradise. The Western Hemisphere was paradise. And people didn't know it. And uh, they came and destroyed it. They're still trying to destroy it. And, uh, I hope there's enough chance for them to take a, a look at the, what's around them and stop. And uh, God created the universe. Sometimes we wonder why God put us here on earth. It's for us to enjoy uh, what the paradise he made for us, for all of us. We're God's children, all the Apache uh, and your people, the Hispanics and the Anglos, they're God's children. And, we need to remember that everybody's life is precious and no one has any right to destroy people and uh, certainly uh, any uh, madman that goes out there and destroy people, he needs to be put away like a wild animal. Uh, we're taught in uh, our Apache way that uh, if we come across a rattlesnake, we don't kill it. We talk to it. Remember. When you come among, one, see one of my people, that I didn't bother you, I didn't hurt you, you don't hurt any of my people. Mm -hmm. and, and we leave it alone. Mm -hmm. But if that same rattler comes inside our house or gets real close to the house, we have no choice but to kill it. Right. It's to protect uh, our children and our family. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same way uh, we treat everything. Uh, we have respect for all life. Uh, God gave us uh, the deer, the antelope, and different things, wild animals for our food, but we still respect it. How would you categorize, if you had to describe Osama bin Laden, we've spoken at length at how you would describe your great-grandfather, how would you describe bin Laden? I don't know. I never met him, uh, but uh, 
all the accusations uh, about him, uh, we don't know how true it is. Uh, uh, there was a lot of killing going on in uh, Africa at one time. And no one did a thing about it because there was no oil there in that country. I think it was Rwanda, I don't remember, but uh, um, everybody ignored all the killings. Uh, but then all of a sudden, all this uh, trouble in the Near East where all the oil is and everybody gets all excited. Mm -hmm. They say it's for human rights and uh, freedom. Uh, is it really? Or is it just for the oil? often wonder about that and uh, things get twisted around so uh, it, it's hard to believe you know the people that own the and control the news media uh, they're the wealthy people mm -hmm. and of course uh, whenever we speak out on things like this uh, we're a threat to them so they'll edit things out like that and uh, they control it but uh, I don't know about uh, but if he's responsible for what was said, like 9-11, stuff like that, uh, he's just a wild animal that needed to be put away too. When that happened, uh, when 9-11 happened, uh, my youngest son was real upset and he wanted to go hunt him down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to calm him down. Uh, we don't know for sure who actually did all of this. and. Uh, at, at that time, uh, you know, they had Desert Storm, and uh, my kids, his uh, mom was out there in Desert Storm, too. And my brother served two terms in Vietnam, and my father was in Normandy Invasion. And uh, it's a slap in the family's face for someone to compare Osama bin Laden with my grandfather, Geronimo. Uh, my father. I was a direct descendant of Geronimo, my brother and I, and uh, just a, I don't know how to describe it, it gets me so angry. And I had uh, family members that were texting me, uh, some of uh, Naichi and Cochise's descendants last night, and they were all upset too. And they said that, uh, you know, I had a right to express my feelings, uh, let the public show that uh, we have a right uh, and our name cannot be destroyed. Our grandfather can't be put down. No matter what they say, uh, uh, my grandfather, uh, they, well, how much they try to belittle him, uh, they can't do anything. He's greater than any man that ever was uh, that walked this face of the earth. That's because he uh, spoke to God directly. Uh, and God answered his prayers and he helped and he cured people. If people that were sick, he came and helped them. That's passed down through the family, the, the knowledge uh, that he had of the plants and animals and stuff to help us. We still, we still have it. Uh, we still practice it. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, uh, one of the uh, rites of passage into womanhood for young, one of the young ladies in the tribe. And that's been carried going on since uh, the beginning of time for our people. Mm -hmm. We still carry on stuff like that. And it's respect for life. And those people that come to our ceremonies, everybody's welcome. We have no enemies. It's just like uh, we can't kill the, the animals when they go to water. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody deserves to get water. And uh, the there's no enemies during our ceremonies. Everybody's welcome, and uh, it's what we're taught. Uh, but uh, we're also taught that if anyone uh, attempts to hurt us, we have to do everything in our power to protect ourselves and our family. Just like that little rattlesnake. Yep. You know, we have something, somebody has to be killed. We have to be killed. You know, Geronimo's name is a name that's been used in the military for years. Uh, you had people jumping out of plane, yelling, Geronimo! This is, this is 100 years ago now. Mm -hmm. So if you know that this has kind of been a military reference for a while, I'm playing devil's advocate for a second, if you know this has been a military reference for a while, why does this have any more significance than when it's been used in the past? Well, uh, when I first heard it on, on uh, TV, they said that, uh, code name for Osama bin Laden was Geronimo. And uh, 
uh, that's a great insult to the family. And, uh, uh, and then yesterday I heard another, last night I heard another newscaster say that uh, when they kill Osama bin Laden or capture him, the code name was Geronimo. So you hear two different stories now. So uh, maybe people are, the newscasters are changing things a little bit because people are upset. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's wrong for them. Uh, I don't see uh, nothing wrong with uh, the paratroopers yelling Geronimo when they jump off the uh, aircrafts because uh, my son, when he used to play as a little kid, we used to laugh at him because he used to say that he wasn't aware of it. But <laughs> He, he plays with these little army figures and they jump off the coffee table. He presents like they're parachute. He says, Geronimo. <laughs> and, uh, he wasn't aware of that. He was uh, calling grandpa's name. <laughs> so to you, that's a different reference. You yes. know, it's totally, the significance is just inconsequential. It's one thing to jump out of a plane and shout a word. It's another thing to call somebody, someone who's accused of doing some acts. But I'm mm. asking this because we had the professor saying this has been a word that's been used with the U.S. military for years and years and years. Well, uh, you know, when the movies about my grandfather came out, one of them was called to run with American hero, America's hero. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was more American than anybody else. If there's an American, it's Geronimo. Uh, but... Uh, we're, we're upset because uh, when we first heard it, uh, they, they uh, used that name Geronimo for Osama bin Laden. And uh, uh, that's an insult. Uh, that's the worst thing you could say about anyone. Today, does your family have more respect because of your direct line to your great-grandfather? How is your family viewed today? Uh, I don't know. I I meet people all over the country and um, here at home, and people are uh, real respectful to me, and I appreciate that. And uh, people give me hugs and wave to me, and whenever they need help, they come and see me, and uh, uh, I feel honored. And uh, it's it's the way we're taught to help people, to so help one another, and. Uh, Sometimes I wonder if I deserve all this kindness and things that people, the respect that they give me. And uh, uh, I have been asked for different places like the Border Patrol and uh, different uh, colleges, universities and schools to do, uh, um, go and to address some of those people and uh, I have before. And, uh, but. Uh, uh, if my grandfather's a symbol uh, that they need, uh, I'm glad that uh, they chose him because uh, he was a spiritual person, uh, a real spiritual, and holy person, and uh, yeah, they they need they wanted his power so bad that even the story about uh, uh, George Bush's grandfather and them uh, stole. Uh, desecrated the crave and stole uh, something from there. Uh, you know, uh, they want his power so bad that they use his name and want to use his bones and everything. And then there's people coming out of the woodwork that claim that they have my grandfather's bow and arrows and they have his uh, rifles and they have, they claim all kinds of stuff. But, uh, uh, well, I don't know about those people, but. Uh, they're all looking for someone uh, to give them the power and strength, and uh, I think that they chose the right person, my grandfather, because uh, if there's anything my grandfather gave me, it's uh, the strength uh, uh, to protect my people and my traditional ways, the Apache ways, respect for everything and everybody in life. Uh, so. Uh, well, I guess that uh, the movie had the right title, Geronimo, America's Hero, but at that time they sure didn't treat him like that. Mm. So you plan on continuing on his legacy and his teaching? I don't his plan day. on doing nothing. I just do what I'm taught. Yeah. And, um, I, 
it's just my teachers uh, from the time I was born I was uh, were given certain responsibilities and uh, I have no choice in the matter uh, I taught the Apache language here at home and at the universities Eastern New Mexico and New Mexico State and uh, uh, I just do what I do and uh, it's it's not like I have a goal or a plan. It's just a responsibility that I have. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you think is important to add? Is there anything you want people to know? Well, they need to uh, respect the uh, my people, uh, all the Native Americans uh, in the United States, North and South America. Uh, they need to respect us as people. Uh, just because they don't understand us, that doesn't mean uh, that we're wrong. Uh, there's no difference uh, between us and other people. We believe in God. Some people go call God by different names. They call him Buddha, Jesus, and all kinds of different names. But uh, uh, there's only one God. Uh, we just see him, call him different, different things. But uh, we're, we're the same as anybody else, and we have a right here on earth as anyone else, and we have a right to uh, enjoy life uh, on paradise as anyone else, and no one has any right to take it from us. And uh, uh, anthropologists, uh, that's one thing that uh, I, I don't like about anthropologists. They're nothing but licensed grave, ro grave robbers. Uh, taking uh, the things uh, that our people have put away in other tribes and they start digging them out and put them on display. Uh, that's wrong, dis disrespectful. They should leave things alone like that. Let it go back uh, to Mother Earth and let it be. Leave things alone. Uh, that's it. Do you have any questions, Dave? Well, this is uh, <coughs> one of the... Uh, Dresses that my grandmother was wearing, it's the same style. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, when they uh, make their passage to womanhood, uh, a ceremony is held for them, and this is the ceremonial dress. So, like the ceremony we were talking about earlier, is this what the young lady will be wearing, or something similar it, to it? Yeah, it'll be something similar. Call this the Chiricahua style, and those. Mm -hmm. uh, they have that the semi-circle things too, they're, uh, they're real handy. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, when uh, my, my great-grandmother and them were taken prisoners, uh, they were wearing one of these uh, moccasins, mm -hmm. and they had a knife blade in there, and uh, they had a <laughs> knife blade in there, and uh, uh, they didn't know that they were hiding the knife blade. Huh. And they dug under the wall with that knife blade. That was that. Um, yeah. Huh. And they made it all the way back here to Mescalero. Hiding it in their moccasin. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when uh, they were out, uh, there's my grandmother. There's your grandmother. And, I was just going to say, that's her. <laughs> yeah. I know that. Talking about when they were uh, harvesting the rocks and he was yelling to his uh, men. That, uh, I got two young girls in the back, so I have a knife in my moccasin. When we go around this curve, move over, so I'll stab them. So, <sighs> so she took that. When they went around the curve, uh, the sister sitting in the back stabbed the Comanche. Wow. And took his war bonnet, his jewelry, and dumped him, and then they took off with his horse, made it back. <laughs> and made it back? And that's a uh, thing that's Nietzsche and his wife. And that's uh, my, my kids. Is, Great grandfather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One of the lances that they use. They also uh, use the lens. Uh, <coughs> in the later years, they took the spokes of the uh, wagon wheels and used them uh, for the spearheads really? because they were made out of hard oak. Right. And, uh, froze to death or anything. What yeah. was the teepee made out of? Uh, uh, heavy canvas. Uh -huh. Nowadays they make them out of that. They're good hunters, even my daughter. She, yeah. She's a bow hunter and speaking their own language. And uh, 
So they, were these prisoners of war? Yeah, these are, these are kids. They took the kids and separated them from their families. Mm. And uh, we had hundreds of them die. And some of them did survive. Because they weren't used yeah. to the disease. I mean, yeah. and this here, Here's your great-grandfather. Yeah. And uh, some people I hear on the news and everywhere that they say his Indian name was the one who yawns. That's a big joke. The one who yawns? Uh, we laugh about <laughs> that. And, uh, his real name in Apache uh, uh, was not one who yawns, but they just let that be. Was, uh, so can you tell us what his real name meant? Gu Yun means the wise one. That was his Apache name, and I have relatives in uh, San Carlos uh, Apache Reservation, Arizona, who still use that name, Gu mm -hmm. they're, they're my relatives from, from uh, San Carlos, Arizona. It's very possible. It's just one of those things yeah. that is outside of my hands. Yeah, so. Yes, I think 30 copies of their magazines, and they never did. And you never got it? I will, um, I'll make sure that I get you. Yeah, I feel like if there's ever a time that they would break the rules, it would be for this, but I don't yeah. know what. It's a decision yeah. way over my head. <laughs> yeah, it'll be put away, and maybe 50 years from now, they'll open it. Right, right. I settled down a little bit. Which is a good thing. It's a good thing. Yesterday you had very raw, real emotion. <laughs> That's what she's about to do. <laughs> it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny when I uh, went to see my wife graduate from uh, Fort Jackson. We went all the way through the deep sound. You can tell their friends and relatives that they touched uh, ended. And then they oh my kept gosh. talking to me and uh, they said, it's beautiful about wow, my kids. And then there's some little kids in front of us. They were looking at the wildlife. There's four black kids, and then one turned around, and his eyes just got all big. You know, come, there's an Indian. I'm like, well, maybe not being treated like a real person. Yeah. And, uh, well, in the deep south, I felt real bad. I was in the big room. Mm -hmm. And it hurted me. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. the nerve of treating us like this, and then them like that. Right. All different, but inside, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. and, and, that my grandpa's wearing. Mm -hmm. I have it at home. It's only for ceremonies. <laughs>